So I'm here with Patrick Monaghan, fresh off the stage as of Thank 25 you. minutes ago. 25 minutes ago. Look, you can feel, you can feel <laughs> oh. how fresh I am. Look at that. Very fresh. I always like to start with a <laughs> hug. It's always great. So fresh. how was that show for you? Uh, that show, well, uh, it was it was nice, but it was slightly long. I mean, I, I think we started on Monday and it's now Wednesday. So it was good. We did a couple of days. There were a couple of people who wanted to leave, but only because they needed water and food. But apart from that, I think it was all right. Fair. What did you What did you think? Oh, I thought it was fantastic. I always, because it's funny, as a comedian, you never know what's happening on stage. I, I would love, because you, you never get to see yourself perform. That's the, that's the funny thing. You'd always like to be that person where you could come out of your body and sit in the audience and watch it. And then I probably would heckle myself. I'd be like, let us go. What are you doing? You've been here for three days. So I don't know, yeah, good. Of course, you interact with the crowd and the audience quite a lot. What motivates you to, to do that? Just, um, I, I just, I like people and, um, I, you know, because constantly, I'm like that all the time. If I wasn't doing stand-up, I'd be walking around the streets just following people, going, can I come in your house and have a chat? And, um, <laughs> and I think that's probably why I've got a probation order in some places. But, no, I think I, I just do. I think it was a natural thing growing up in the north. It was always like that, where I remember you'd sit on a bus, and if you went on a bus and you didn't find out that woman's life story or that fella's... Uh, past history by the time you got to your stop people would think you were rude so it was always like that chatting and oh where did you do what did you do and you chat 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 and then I think it was a case of when I got older I thought oh wow um, I could do this for a living just talk to people and get but I wanted to do a job that would involve talking so it was either working in a supermarket working on the kiosk doing stuff like that and then um, and then them jobs were great but then supermarkets back in the day would close at six o'clock or eight o'clock so I realized there was you couldn't talk to any more people unless you locked the shop and kept them in. So it was like, then I thought, I'll have to go somewhere else to talk. And then at night time, there was comedy clubs. So I thought, oh, brilliant, I'll just work at night at clubs. So evidently, this plays a massive part in the stuff you perform. How much planning do you do before a show, or is it all just sort of well, off the cuff? No, I mean, it's like, it is funny, because it, it's like, it's a saying that they have in comedy that people say it's like a tip of the iceberg for most things. It's like that cliche thing where, at the show, what you see at the show, you know, like we'll do 20 minutes, half an hour. If I'm touring, I'll do an hour and a half, two hours. And people think, oh my God, that's a great job. You turn up, you do, you, you talk for half an hour, an hour, and that's it. And then you get the rest of the day to sit on the sofa in your pants and watch telly and just eat different ranges of cornflakes. But it's not really. It's like what we do during the day is, it's like anything. It's like the easiest way to describe it is like the Olympics. If you if you watch the athlete uh, the Olympics where people go, look at you, Usain Bolt, he's only running for 9.8 seconds, and that's his job. No, because he spent, he spent three years training just to run that nine seconds or 10 seconds. And, mm. and it's the same with comedy. So that, uh, when you see us, not, I mean, them shows here are quite nice. These are quite nice, because you're only doing 20, 30 minutes. You can do them, you know, not in your sleep, but you can do them with little preparation. But to do a tour show, which I'm doing, Tomorrow night at the Leicester Festival, that would take me, God, that, the title coming up with the show, even just thinking about it, would take me 12 to 18 months previous. But every, every 12 months, I've got to bang out a new hour and a half, two hour show. So what I do is, um, even though I'm writing, even though I'm touring this new show now, I'm still got, I'm writing ideas for my next show, which won't kick off until the end of this tour. And then stuff that won't fit into that show will go into the following year. So constantly, as a comedian, you've got a conveyor belt of stuff going on. It's like a factory where you've got three conveyor belts going. You've got, right, this is what I'm doing at the moment. This is stuff that I can't get in, but I'm going to put in for this, and this is other stuff that I'm... And then, and then, as a comedian, you've also got to do other stuff. You've got to write books, or you write ideas for this. You write comedy shows. I'm writing, you're developing stuff for TV, radio, whatever. You develop other stuff, so all the time. And also, I'm, that's a new idea for Dragon's Den. It's a... It's a, a, mic pack a, mic pack, your, uh... a mic pack that has a hand. That, look, <laughs> this, is, this is Gollum from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Here he is. Treasure. We call him Will. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so in terms of preparation, um, yeah, I mean, it is funny because it, it is, I think the beauty of it is, if you look at someone like... Um, Richard Pryor, Robin Williams, Billy Conley, Dave Allen, uh, uh, all of these comics from the past where they walk on stage and the classic thing, people go, oh, he can just read the phone book and he'll be funny. But what you don't realise is he's got 50 years of experience of standing there 
and uh, they can just talk so they can make any situation like they could just mm. go to town today oh, I was around the Shires today in Leicester shop and then they'll come on stage and do an hour of material on that and that's from years of experience mm. I think that's it's a great thing but it's and I think that is but you still need preparation I mean I, I remember the thing that was always told to me as well about um, you know um, um, fail to prepare prepare to fail so it's always about you know you can run into a gig and go on stage but you still need to before that gig, you need to be in that mindset going right i want to do this do this do this and you know you have yourself a little have yourself some stories and stuff so are these big big build-ups and then that final uh, almost show at the end of the build-up do you ever get nervous before you walk on stage and perform it all no i mean it's like uh, when i first started you did do you getting like oh my god what happens if they throw stuff at me what happens if, <laughs> you'd always think of like oh my god they're gonna throw stuff at me. now i actually love it if people throw stuff at me i think well i hope they throw a chair because i want to take that home i need some furniture or i hope they throw <laughs> a purse at me or oh god i love cake are you gonna throw a cupcake at me and it's um so you don't get nervous of uh, people's reactions as no well, it, because say. that keeps it it's exciting for me because then it, it, it makes it more realistic because if I, it's like if we have a, we're having a conversation now, it's quite mm. exciting that you're, I don't know what you're going to ask me, and we'll, we'll chat. The same way if me and you were in a coffee shop and we're chatting, it's quite exciting. Whereas if I knew everything that you're going to ask me, or if you knew everything I was going to say to you, you'd just be like, oh my God, we're going through <laughs> the same, or why? I don't want to know that he likes m ms I'm sick of this. He's told me 10 times. So it's like, so you, you want something different. Like, so like tonight's gig was different to the night before tomorrow night it'll be different materials all stuff and then you never know what people are going to say to you i mean it's great some <laughs> of the stuff that people shout out it is amazing i mean sometimes some of the stuff that they shout out is so funny you wish you could use it every night but then you can't because it's, it's just <laughs> so good to that night like mm. a bloke the other night was shouting out i've got a zebra onesie and then he's doing impressions of zebras which is great but you can't i can't go on tomorrow night at leicester and go hey tell you what i met this bloke with a zebra onesie he hangs around the park eating grass oh he's brilliant people just go are you mental I said no no but the other night it was great so it, it yeah it mm. is you do need that every night something different fair enough uh let's just skip over the comedy festival for a second yeah what have you got planned in the future if anything at all of course. yeah i've got loads of stuff i've got uh, i've got to pay me council tax <laughs> i've got to sort out the no i've got in terms of um what i've got planning so comedy is um i i mean it's that old thing where i'd love to die on stage just like i'd literally as in an old man on stage not like die with last it'd probably be all right for you but not so great for the audience oh, I know, members exactly. no, but i think that's the best way to go out because it'd be hilarious because they'd be still laughing going look at my man look at him unconscious like tommy cooper did it you know all these acts did it where um uh, it was the classic one now he's still he's brilliant he still goes he's um ken dodd and you want to be that age because they're not they don't not doing it for the money they're just doing mm. it for the love and i think that is that is something that you want to do i just want to you just enjoy it so much that I want to still be doing that. I want people still to listen to you. And then, you know, you want to be the funniest bloke in the, in the old people's home. Going, all right, love, I'll tell you. Come on, lady, sit down. <laughs> Let me tell you that. Oh, you're already set. Oh, no, don't sit down. You'll never get up. And I want to be that sort of, yeah, I just love it, where you want to just do it forever. But uh, to keep that going, I've obviously got to do other projects. So at the moment, I'm developing a couple of, working on a couple of TV ideas, some bits and pieces. Um, and then the touring. So I've always got to keep balance that up. Mm. And other things that I'm doing at the moment to keep yourself um, active as well as I've got a charity boxing match coming up on the 7th of Feb. So if anyone wants to sponsor, it's great. It's for a young kid, three-year-old kid, Kayan Musgrove, who's got uh, brain cancer and it's like to get life-saving treatment for him. And then on the 29th of May, I'm doing the Edinburgh Marathon, which is again a fundraiser for children's hospice all around the UK for Zoe's Place. So these things are all challenges as a comedian, not you don't have to be a comedian, but something that you have to challenge mm. yourself. Because it, exactly, it's like, um, you know, I can just do me gigs at night and then in the daytime do nothing, or I can do me gigs and then put other challenges in place, like mm. running a marathon or boxing. Sounds like you've got some fantastic stuff oh, planned. Yeah. If people want to hear you and see you at the Comedy Festival, where and when can they hear you and see you? So I am at the Criterion, I think, is that how you say it? Criterion? Criterion? I believe. Criterion. So. I'm, 
Criterion. 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 You can see me there at 7 o'clock uh, this Wednesday night. It's my uh, tour show, The Disco Years. Or uh, about 4 o'clock, I'll be in Greg's tomorrow. So if you want to see me there, I'll be there. <laughs> and um, about 5, I'll probably be back in because I'm always quite hungry. Um, and then uh, tweet me, Patrick J. Monahan on Twitter. My Facebook is uh, patrickmonahan.co.uk or I've got a Facebook page. You can, you can like it, you can write on it. It's Patrick J. Monahan as well. So, yeah, you can, there's loads of ways now. It's brilliant. Loads of ways to get hold of me. It's unbelievable. Fantastic. I'll probably give you my phone number. <laughs> And your address. And me address. Code, yeah. Yes. I'm only, I'm only taking packages. That's all <laughs> I'm having. Parcels. Patrick Monaghan. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>